Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Antonia, and today we will be reacting to some atheist logic and arguments. These are all from TikTok, so let's see if we can debunk them. God, after impregnating a young girl with himself so he could sacrifice himself, son, to himself to save us from himself, not really, because he didn't stay dead and people still go to hell. Okay, first of all, that's not even a good sentence. Himself, son, isn't even a word. She got the first part right, okay? God did uh, make a young girl pregnant with his Holy Spirit. That part is correct. It was Mary. And he did it so Jesus would sacrifice himself for us. Now, the bottom part is the issue because it says sacrifice himself to save us from himself. Now, that's not true. The reason why we need to be saved is because sin has separated us from God and has led us to the path of hell towards destruction, okay? So Jesus came and died for our sins so that we can be reunited with God. And then it says, but not really, because he didn't stay dead. Jesus is God. He's not going to stay dead because God is eternal and he's alive. And Jesus did die, actually. He died for like three days because he was in hell for that period of time so that we don't need to go to hell once we die. Now, he kind of took that punishment from us. And the reason why people still go to hell is because you need to believe in order to get to heaven. Salvation is a free gift, okay? Don't get me wrong, you can't work for your salvation. You can't earn it. It's not a work-based salvation. However, you need to believe and have faith of what Jesus did for you in order to be saved. And it says in the Bible, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, okay? So that's all you gotta do. You need to call on God, you need to repent, and he will forgive you, you will be saved, and you won't go to hell. Because according to their logic, she's saying that everyone will go to heaven once they die. So that would basically mean that you can live a life however you want to. You can sin as much as you want, you can murder people, you can be a thief, you can like lie and cheat, whatever, and you still go to heaven. But that's not like that's not the case. That's not how it works. Read the word before you make statements like that because it's not true. We'll move on to the next video. God is evil. I've thought that since I was a child and I'm going to tell you why. I read a story of Abraham in the Bible and it goes like this. God promises Abraham and his wife Sarah that they're going to have a baby and they're going to get pregnant. They wait their whole f lives. They're so depressed. They're struggling with infertility. They're watching everyone around them have children. And then finally, at 99 years old, God lets them have a baby that they name laughter because everyone in the community is laughing at them. It's also not true. It says that Sarah laughed when she got the kid. God made her laugh and that is why he is called Isaac. Just a little explanation there. And I apologize for the crude language. I will make sure to bleep that out afterwards. That they had a baby so f and then because God was pissed off that he didn't trust, they didn't trust that he was going to give them a baby. When the baby grows up a little bit and this prized child they waited their whole life to have, God says, F kill him. So he takes his son and he brings him up a hill and he's like, we're going to be sacrificing a sheep. Bring some firewood. Brings him to the hill, ties him up, gets a knife, goes to shank his kid. And an angel comes and goes, ah, just kidding. God just wanted you to show that you were afraid of him and would do anything he said. Okay, I'm going to pause here because there's a few things we need to set straight before we move on. It's true that Abram didn't completely trust him. He did trust God, okay? Don't get me wrong. Abram was a man of God for sure. But he did try to get a kid of his own with another uh, woman to kind of speed up the process. However, that's not why... God made Abraham sacrifice his son. Him doing what God said to sacrifice Isaac showed his faith and it was also kind of like a prophecy towards Jesus. Because by making Abraham do this, he showed us what he would do for us later with Jesus. With Jesus being his one and only son. And like I understand why the story may seem cruel and like bad for people at first, but if you really look into it, it's like a huge prophecy for what Jesus is going to do for us, for what God's going to do for us. Now, adding on to that, God also tells us very clearly, okay, that it's not his will for us to sacrifice our kids to him. He makes that especially clear in the Old Testament, where so many people are sacrificing their sons and their daughters to Baal, okay, like a false god, an idol, and they're making their kids go through the fire 
and they're sacrificing them for the gods. So God would never make you kill your kid, okay? Just to get that clear, he would never. And one more thing, I feel like Abraham knew he would go back with Isaac. Because when Abraham went up the hill to go sacrifice whatever, he told the people he was with that we, so him and Isaac, we're gonna return after they finished the sacrifice. So I feel like he knew he was gonna return with his son, but maybe that's just my interpretation, okay? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That is psychological abuse. That is domestic abuse. That is torture. That is psychological torture. Um, what the f I read that as a kid and I was like, no, I'm out, I'm out. That's crazy and i would bring it up in school and i'd be like i need someone to explain this to me because this is sadistic as is evil this is devil okay and they would say to me it's a beautiful story about his faith in god he believed in god so much he was willing to kill his kid i'm like okay um so would you say that about any psychotic mother who kills her kid because the voices in her head tell her to no Going back to my point of God would never want you to kill your kid, any person who does murder their child claiming that God told them to or that they heard voices from the Holy Spirit telling them to like shoot their kid, that's not God, okay? That that 100% is the enemy. Just so we don't get those two mixed up, okay? Because God would never do that, just to be clear. Because that's crazy. That is crazy. Who would do that to someone that they love? And my teachers would argue with me and say, no, it shows his devotion to God. It shows how much he believed, like, he believed so much he would murder people. How the f is your moral compass based on believing blindly in a person who is going to taunt you psychologically and make you almost murder your f child just to prove you're afraid of him? What in the sweet mother of f They couldn't come back from that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No, nope. no, nope. I sent him out. I said, I'm 10 years old and I can figure out that this is the dumbest I've ever heard. The whole Old Testament, vile, evil, violent, bloodshed. And they're just like, oh no, we just like, we just like, we like, let's just read the, the New Testament more. Cause it's a little like watered down. You just want to gloss over that? You want to pretend your God doesn't do that? You're like, oh my God, my husband abuses people. But like, I don't look at that part. I, I tell a glorified story. You're crazy. Crazy. Uh -uh. I do agree that the Old Testament is violent and full of blood, but they didn't have the revelation of God's grace and mercy back then, as we do now with Jesus. They still needed to make those sacrifices in order to receive forgiveness. Now we just need to have faith in Jesus and like, we're saved, we're good. But back then you had to like make those sacrifices. There were specific rules for what you had to uh, give to God in order to, you know, get forgiveness of your sins. And it was by the spilling of blood. And the only thing evil in the Old Testament were the people, okay? Not God. God, he wanted to save his people. He sent so many prophets. He sent so many judges to save his people from the oppressors, right? From the people they were battling with. However, they decided to just not listen to him. They went their own ways, which obviously led to more battles, to more blood, to more violence. So none of it is God's fault. All of it was the people's fault, just like it is today. The New Testament doesn't just gloss over it. Jesus explicitly said that the rules and commandments that were in the Old Testament are just as valuable now as they were back then. So we can't just ignore what the Old Testament is. What she said wasn't really true. I feel like she's making an opinion based off of her feelings instead of like the facts and like scriptures. But with that being said, we're going to head over to the next video. I'm an atheist, which means I don't believe that God exists. But if it does, I refuse to believe that it is as terrible as believers paint it out to be. And yes, you heard me right. 
believers because they, not atheists, make God out to be a terrible monster. And in fact, there's one aspect of this I'd really like to touch on. Picture in your head the most perfect person, someone who is kind, caring, loving, selfless, someone who does all that they can to uplift everyone around them, someone who does real, measurable good on this planet in terms of reducing homelessness, reducing global hunger. Hell, they even eradicate diseases. Somebody who is just absolutely amazing. Now let's give that person just one more quality. Atheism. They don't believe that God exists. And it doesn't change any of their kind acts. It doesn't change the fact that they bring good into this world. They themselves are just atheists and not even outwardly. They don't tell other people about this. They just know in their heart that they don't believe that God is real. One of my biggest struggles with God is the fact that no matter how amazing that hypothetical person is, it would never be enough for the God of most religions. Despite everything that they did throughout the course of their life, they would still be sent to hell eternally. Truly, picture in your brain what it would look like that person after death coming face to face with God. Hey, how's it going, new dead person? God here, just gotta review your file really quick so we can figure out what to do with your eternal soul. Don't worry, this doesn't take long. So, uh, it says here, you led a fantastic life. You were kind and loving to those around you. You donated time and money to causes you believed in and they were actually good causes. Yeah, uh, all around, seems like you did a great job. Oh, says right here, you didn't believe in me. Oof, unlucko bucko. I have terrible news. Despite the fact that you actually did an amazing job down on Earth, like better than everyone who actually does believe in me, I am actually gonna have to send you to hell forever because you didn't worship me. Also, yes, I know I am the one who created you and I knew you would be skeptical because I created you that way and because I am all knowing. And yes, I knew that not enough evidence existed in the universe for you to believe in me given the- We are going to pause right there. There's so many things we need to unpack. The first thing I feel like I should address is that there are kind and caring people in this world that do good things and who are atheists, okay, that is true. However, there's not a perfect person in the world. Like each single person has sinned in their life. The Bible says all have fallen short of the glory of God, which means that everyone has sinned before. And like we mentioned earlier, sin is separation from God. So when you sin, you separate yourself from God because God can't be together with sin. God is good, sin is evil, and those two don't mix. It's like that one analogy where you send a criminal to court, okay, because he did, I don't know, say he like stole something, not even a big thing, just like something little, and he goes to court and he tells the judge, well, look, I'm like, I'm a really good person. I know I stole this thing, but I do so many good things. So how about we just say you don't give me any punishment? Obviously, that's not going to work, okay, the, like the criminal is still going to get punished for that crime, even though they do good things in their life because they still committed a crime. So when we sin, we can't just be left unpunished because that wouldn't be just at all. Like not even in our world is it just, and for God it's not just either. So we still deserve punishment, okay? Which is hell, obviously. But because of Jesus, we get the opportunity to not get punished for that thing and to not be sent to hell, but instead to put that punishment onto what Jesus did for us. And that is how you receive forgiveness. However, if you're an atheist and you don't believe in this, then you're not being cleansed. Like you're not being washed clean of that sin. You're not being forgiven. And so when you die, you still get punished for the sins you committed. Even though you did good things in your life, there are still bad things you did. Because the only perfect person who has ever lived without committing any sin was Jesus. Every other person in the world has sinned and therefore deserves punishment. I deserve hell, you deserve hell, we all do. But because of Jesus, we have that opportunity to not go there, but instead to go to heaven. And that is achieved, that salvation is achieved by faith and not by your works. So you can't do good works to earn your way to heaven. You need to have that faith. And the second point is that God gave us so much evidence for us to believe in him. I mean, we have the Bible, which is God's word, like God wrote that. It is inspired by his words, by his thoughts. That is, I mean, I feel like that is proof enough. But then you also have so many testimonies. Even my own testimony, I made a video about it. There are countless other people. And you also have all creation around you. Like you have nature, you have people, you have the animals. 
I feel like that is so much evidence for there to be a creator. So there's there's a lot of proof that God exists. God is real, you guys. The way I created you. So in essence, I created you just so I could send you to a lake of fire. But hey, them's the breaks, bucko. Lou, Lou, Lou. Going back to God stuff. God stuff is my favorite stuff to do. If that is actually what God is like, I do not want any part of it. I do not want to pray to it. I don't want to worship it. I don't want to devote any time to it. Nothing. It is a power-hungry narcissist that creates life simply to torture it. It's not worth praying to. I'm just going to continue to be good without God. And I hope that you have an absolutely amazing, fantastic morning, evening, day, night, whatever. Just have a good whatever you're having. God doesn't want to send you to hell. God wants all of us to be saved. It is in the Bible. Jesus said it's not the will of the Father for even one of the little ones, which means us, to be perished, okay? God wants us to go to heaven, which is why we need Jesus. There is one more video we must watch together. Don't leave, because I don't want to do this alone, okay? Hi, welcome back to my series, Reasons Why I No Longer Identify as Christian, and buckle up, because this one is going to be a doozy. I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers with this one, but just get through this with me, okay? I was on the phone with my friend the other day and they said to me, you know, I'm really surprised that you're, you know, still so passionate about deconstruction because you've been on this journey for years. Personally, I believe one's deconstruction journey, especially with indoctrination, never really ends. However, like I'm just as passionate about it when I started as I am now. And they asked me why. And instantly I made the connection and I had never really thought about it before. The evangelical church taught me that I was a victim. They taught me that I was persecuted and to be joyful that I was persecuted. I feel like once a church tells you you're a victim, you should go to a different church because God tells us that we are not victims, but we are more than conquerors in Christ. There is persecution though. Some people do get killed for their faith, um, or even if it's just persecution by the enemy, by the devil, like spiritual attacks, that's also a real thing. Um, but yeah, you are not a victim, so don't ever believe that. They taught me that my persecution and my oppression made me closer to God. It validated that I was chosen and I was doing something right. But then I grew up and I realized that the religion that I was a part of was the oppressor in this country. Being persecuted does show that you're doing something right because the devil will always try to destroy what is godly and what is good. And so when you're following God and you're, you know, obeying his laws, then you're doing something that the devil doesn't want you to do. And so he's going to attack you. The devil doesn't need to attack anyone who's already living in sin because they're already separated from God. Anywho, moving on with the video. And that messed me up so badly. I realized that my religion upheld the system of enslaved people. My religion was the reason why LGBTQ plus people could not get married or were afraid of walking out of the house together without getting lynched. I was taught that I was a victim when my religion was the only one represented in politics and where policy that aligned with my religion was actively being pushed. She's saying that her country oppresses people, which might be true. However, the country is oppressing the people not God. God's not oppressing anyone because God is good. So it's the people that are doing bad things. Now, she's probably in the US or Canada or UK, whatever. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. I can, I can promise you that country is not pushing Christianity, okay? Like, basically no country is. Political leaders might identify themselves as Christian, but they don't act like it, okay? I mean, if we look at the music industry. How many songs, how many artists do you see that glorify God, okay? Because I can tell you, they're, like, there are good Christian artists out there, but they're not in the mainstream. Because I know all the very famous and influential singers like Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, uh, Demi Lovato, Doja Cat, okay, Lil Nas. I don't even know, like, all these people that are so famous right now. None of them are glorifying God. But yet, all of these people are being pushed forwards, okay? And even if you look into the Hollywood industry, okay, movie industry, every single movie, like, glorifies some kind of sin. 
Whether it's sexual sin, whether it's pride or greed, power, sure, a country might identify itself as Christian, but are they really acting according to God's word? Because remember, the devil won't ever push anything that he does not agree with. He will only push what is glorifying him and what will lead people astray from God, okay? I can tell you that much. Across a nation that prides itself on religious freedom. And coming to this reality disgusted me. So listen up if you are a Christian in America. You are not persecuted here. Sure, you can be criticized and critiqued, as you should be, but you are 100% in no way, shape, or form persecuted. You are not oppressed. In this country, you are the oppressor. You are the ones actively going against people's rights and free will to choose a different life. You are the ones that celebrate when a company has John 316 on the bottom of their cups while simultaneously saying that Starbucks waving a pride flag is shoving ideologies down your throat. And I hope you know that in this country, you are the villains. You are the bad guys. And the only way for Christians to no longer have that reputation is for them to acknowledge that all the things that I listed exist. I can't wait to see how many people I'm gonna have to block, but anyways. All the things she says do exist, they're true, but they're not Christianity's fault. And if Starbucks is waving a pride flag, then as a Christian, you shouldn't like that because pride is bad, pride is a sin. I made a whole video about that, check it out if you like. She obviously doesn't know scripture that well. She supports LGBTQ and believes she's a victim because like that's not what the Bible teaches us. To be honest, I feel like she's actually complaining about the government more than she is about Christianity because absolutely none of the things she stated describes Christianity or describes who God is. So I feel like she's just hurt by what the government is doing, which can be understandable. Anyways, after watching all of these videos, I have concluded that God is still good, God is still real, and that I will keep living in faith. So comment down below your guys' thoughts on this, um, what you believe, and what you would like to see next. My Instagram will also be here if you'd like to DM me um, any questions or comments, whatever. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you'd like to support me, it would make my day. Um, yeah, keep the faith, you guys. Keep praying, keep believing, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.